Hi there. Nigel, what are you doing here? Where's Ashley? Uh, he's busy today, so he's asked me to take his place. Oh, well, it's great. Nice to see you. Uh, what have you got there, Annabelle? Oh, it's my old, very old record collection. It's full of vinyl, cassette tape, CDs. Some of the cassettes and vinyl belong to my dad. I'm going to give them away to a charity shop. Why don't you want these anymore, Annabelle? Some of these might be collector's items. Well, all the music I listen to now is on this little device, my smartphone. It's amazing how music technology has changed. We don't walk into a shop anymore to buy music. We simply download it. Or stream it from websites. Our documentary today is about new music technology and how it has created problems for record companies. We're going to meet Charlotte, who is a singer, but she doesn't have a recording contract. Instead, she promotes her own music. So, as you watch, try to answer this question. According to Charlotte, which is the only way to make money from music these days? Do you remember the first music album you bought? Was it on vinyl? Maybe it was a cassette tape. Maybe it was a CD. At the beginning of the 21st century, the number one place to buy recorded music was at the record shop. But the music industry has changed dramatically in recent years. Between 2000 and 2010, sales of CDs fell by over 70%, and many music stores had to close. Music industry expert Emma Nouriel explains. More than half of music sales are now digital. Um, this is for simply the reason that it's a lot more convenient. You can download music from your smartphone and you can also do it in the comfort of your own home from things like iTunes. So there really is no need to go out to the shops. While the change in technology is causing problems for record companies, it has some advantages for musicians in the industry. I said it would rain today, but the sun shone. You said that you'd Charlotte Campbell is a new young singer trying to promote her music. She uses social media sites like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Things when we don't know, the times they change. I don't have a record contract yet. I rely on social media. I have Facebook and YouTube and Twitter as well, so I speak to my fans directly about my music. On YouTube, I post a new video every week, so they tune in to see that. And on Facebook, I have updates about gigs or um, where I'll be busking in London. Charlotte built her own website with the help of a friend. She updates it with news about where she is playing and links for people to hear her music. Charlotte also belongs to a website called pledgemusic.com, where fans can donate money to support new musicians. I wanted to fund my album, so I asked for help from my fans. So they bought the album in advance, and I took the money to record the album. And then they get the first copies and the first listen of the album. And then they also got exclusive videos of me in the studio, updates, and some extra tracks that weren't on the album. Emma Nouriel is impressed by the imagination of the new wave of musicians, but is worried about the future of the music industry. People aren't making as much money in the music industry from traditional music sales, um, CDs. But Charlotte is more optimistic. The music industry has changed a lot, but it now allows for musicians to have a lot more control rather than record labels choosing who is in the charts. The fans now choose and so the musicians get to have a direct relationship with their fans. A lot of music is downloaded for free now, which is a shame, but it means that the only way to make money from music is by performing live, which is a good thing because only real musicians can perform live and that means that real musicians are the ones that will be successful. The digital age is creating challenges for both music companies and musicians. But if a new artist can successfully promote themselves through the internet, suddenly they have a huge worldwide fan base. And if that happens, you can be sure that the music companies will come knocking on their door. Nigel, what are you doing? Oh, I'm looking at Charlotte's website. 
She says she posts information on her website about where she's playing. I'd love to go to one of her gigs. Well, she certainly uses social media really well to promote herself. You should go on YouTube. She says she posts a new video every week. Oh, I really like her song, um... Uh-oh, love is a strong word. Uh-oh, my little songbird. Oh, not bad, Annabelle. <laughs> I'm sure you'll become quite a good singer. <laughs> Shall we take a look at our question? Which is the only way to make money from music these days? A lot of music is downloaded for free now, which is a shame, but it means that the only way to make money from music is by performing live, which is a good thing because only real musicians can perform live and that means that real musicians are the ones that will be successful. The only way to make money from music is by performing live. So, let's see what else you have. Uh, Ricky Martin, mm. take that. And the Spice Girls. Oh, I think my sister put those in the box for recycling. Well, you do have a very interesting music collection. <laughs> oh, I think it's good to listen to a wide range of music. Yes, I know, you're right. I listen to a lot of music styles from all over the world. Every country has given something special to music. Well, our international friends know about that. We asked them, what is your country's main contribution to the history of music? Here's what they said. Probably the most obvious contribution everyone would think would be the bagpipe, because everybody knows the Scottish bagpipe, but in fact, it would be wrong to say that it originated in Scotland. It didn't. Bagpipes actually originally come from the Middle East. Chuck Berry, probably, because Chuck Berry influenced the Beatles and the Stones and all of the rock music that came out of um, England. I think a very popular thing that most people know when they think of New Zealand music is um, Crowded House. We have t traditional Australian Aboriginal music, but we also have sort of the pub rock scene where we've got things like ACDC. South Africa has had a lot of singers that have come out of South Africa and um, Ladysmith Black Mambaza, for, for instance. From the east coast of Canada comes the Celtic music, which originates from Ireland, and it's spread across Canada. It's become an o its own genre and its own, and it's very popular with all Canadians. Reggae is a big, big, big um, influence in, in music nowadays. Um, people like Bob Marley. The biggest name to the contribution of music in England has got to be Paul McCartney. So, Paul McCartney is still the biggest influence on music in the UK. Do you have any of his music in your box? No, but I have several Bob Marley albums. I love reggae. I didn't know that the Scottish bagpipes originally came from the Middle East. Yes, it's amazing how far music travels. The girl from Canada said that Celtic music from Ireland is popular over there. Celtic music is a kind of folk music, and we're going to hear some today. In this episode of That's Britain, I visited Newcastle and found out about the live music scene. In Newcastle, there are a lot of bands who perform in venues like pubs and bars. There are also a lot of buskers, people who play music on the streets for money. While you watch, listen for the answer to this question. Why is Newcastle a good place for musicians? <laughs> I'm on my way to Newcastle. The first thing you see as you approach the city by rail or by road is this amazing sculpture. It's made of steel and it's called the Angel of the North. This unusual bridge is called the Gateshead Millennium Bridge and it's used by pedestrians and cyclists to cross the River Tyne. Nearby is the Sage, Newcastle's music and arts centre. Thank you. 
sorry to stop you. Do you mind if I ask you some questions? Not at all, not at all. I'm Nigel. Nigel, Matthew. Matthew, good to meet you. Is this here a good place for busking? In Newcastle, it's one of the better places. It's open, it's sociable, there are people sitting, having coffee. Did people generally give the same amount of money, or can it really it vary? It varies massively. And sometimes when you can tell people haven't got a lot of money and they give very little, it means more to me than a rich person giving a lot. Wow, lovely. Well, I wish you best of luck and have a great day here in Newcastle. Thank you. But Newcastle doesn't just have music on its streets. Many famous bands and musicians like Sting and Dire Straits come from Newcastle and there's a very good live music scene. I'm here outside the Cumberland Arms pub and performing here tonight are Kath and Phil. Hi guys, how are you doing? Not bad. Now then, uh, what kind of music do you play? I'd say it's mostly traditional music, um, old stories and old songs that have come from uh, times past um, and from from both the American and English traditions. Okay, and the genre is, is folk, essentially. Indie folk music. Uh -huh. And Phil, what's Newcastle as a city like for musicians such as yourselves? It's very good. There's lots of places to play, places to rehearse, lots of people interested in coming to watch, so it's, it's pretty good. Good to hear it. Well, look, best of luck with tonight's gig. I hope it goes really well. Thank Thanks you. Very much. Cheers. Let's watch them rehearse. I've had a great time enjoying Newcastle's music scene. Next, we're heading to Loch Lomond in Scotland. See you there. Cheers. Well, Newcastle certainly does have some very impressive architecture. The Angel of the North looks stunning. Did you know that the Angel of the North has a wingspan that is bigger than a Boeing 757 aeroplane? Wow, that's amazing. Anyway, did you get the answer to our question? Why is Newcastle a good place for musicians? And Phil, what's Newcastle as a city like for musicians such as yourself? It's very good. There's lots of places to play, places to rehearse, lots of people interested in coming to watch, so it's, it's pretty good. So in Newcastle, there are plenty of places to play, places to rehearse, and people are interested in coming to watch. Uh, Nigel, you play the guitar, don't you? Uh, I try. Have you ever been busking? Yes, once actually. But all I got was 55 pence and an empty crisp packet. Oh dear. <laughs> well, that's the end of today's programme. We hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.